Hi guys, uh, my name is Trevor, and my topic is Eastern and Western animation. So I'm um, pretty much... Whoa, oh my dandy, a video about animation? Who could have known? You just had to, didn't you? You couldn't help yourself, could you? Could you? I mean, come on. We all knew you were going to do this. I mean, why? you could have just done something original. You could have taught yourself something, but you didn't. You just did the same old, same old, you, you big goober. You big, you big dummy. God. <laughs> Okay, well, um, you, you can shut up because um, this is my my presentation and my video. So, um, yes, I am doing this, um, and you can't stop me. So, uh, no, uh, to begin with, I think it would be a good idea to define what the heck animation actually is, because in my experience, some people don't really know. Animation is the illusion of, of motion through related images. According to me, this is what Google says. I'll put it up on screen right now. And um, you know what? I don't even need to give you examples, but just for clarity, here's a bunch of examples. Um, Mickey Moose. Lengthy tones. Spang knob. Pokemon. Avatar. And last but not least, just about every high-budget piece of media you interact with. Do you play video games? You interact with animation. Do you watch movies? Someone's gotta animate that weird CG Hulk. Do you like Microsoft PowerPoints? You interact with animation. Do you like looking at me? This is a mask I used to tell funny jokes on the internet. I am not real. This is just a vague representation to me that I've created for your enjoyment. Everything I am doing right now is just an illusion of a false representation of me. Do not trust me. Do not trust anyone. Do not trust yourself. Your eyes deceive you. Well, guess what, kiddo? You're interacting with animation. And I really can't help but understate how big of a deal animation is because of how ingrained it is in our society. It's so universal, I can't even begin to describe its importance. Alright, and uh, just describe how important animation is to society, and uh, done! But Mr. Trevor, I read the video title. Isn't this video supposed to explain the difference between animation in the east and in the west when are you going to do that i want okay so li listen i know what you're trying to do shut up don't rush me this is my it's, it's happening okay adios all right and with that out of the way animation in the east and in the west okay so since this class is primarily focusing on china india and japan those are the countries i'll be talking about oh right I i'm making this public um everyone that's watching that is not in my Asian humanities class. Um, welcome. You're watching a school presentation. I don't know how you got here, but welcome. Uh, okay, anyways, India. I'm starting out with India because it's not really what you'd call an animation hotspot, or I mean they don't typically create homegrown animation. The type of they work is more outsourcing. Of course, by outsourcing, I mean that they do all the dirty work of animation, i.e. coloring and in-betweens, which, if you've ever animated, you know is the worst part of animating. Uh, and who outsourced them, you may ask? Well, the good old USA. After all, why do all the hard work yourself when you could just get someone else to do it for you for half the cost? So why not make original animation and do something with that? Well, according to my sources, the competition with Bollywood is too steep and the demand for animation just isn't there. Kinda sad, a little bit. But hey, it's growing. Um, I guess that in 2016, the Indian animation industry grew by 16%, which is pretty schnazzy if you ask me. Maybe even kind of super cool? Perhaps mega awesome? Perhaps? Hmm? I can't- I don't- I mean, okay, so the real reason I'm not going super in-depth in India is because there's not too much to talk about. That's not me. Um, that's just- that's just how it is. I'm sorry. But anyways, um, we have a China to talk about, so let's do that. Like most countries, animation gained traction in China around 1930 when the technique became known around the world. And, it, and in the beginning, it was all cool. We got the Wayne Brothers, which was an actual animation studio, and they made some stuff. But everything changed when a little organization called the Chinese Communist Party attacked, and they took control of the government. Yeah, so I don't know why, but the new government wasn't super interested in this whole cartoon business and kind of shut down the majority of it, with the remaining animators working on everyone's favorite show, Communist Propaganda. And it was like that for quite a bit until the economy changed from a socialist market economy to a planned market economy. And if you don't know what that means, don't worry, neither do I. But what it did was pretty much allow more freedom into what can be made, and some Chinese artists were like, um, yes, hello, I would, I would like to animate now. And just like that, we got ourselves some tasty Chinese animation.
So around this time is when the internet kind of started existing, and now suddenly everyone can animate if they have a computer. And thus we got the gift that is... Flash animation, and for those of you who don't know what that is, Flash animation is very small-scale animation that got its name from Adobe Flash. Yes, the Adobe Flash, and given how relatively easy the software is to learn and how low-cost it is, just about everyone can animate now. Yay! And I hate to do this, but I'm gonna put a pause on that to discuss Japanese and Western animation now, because when the 2000s hit, the intent got a little samey everywhere. And I kind of need to talk about Japan and the US at the same time because their animation industries are kind of tight at the hip. Uh, so I need to talk about one to talk about the other or else it just doesn't work, which is kind of dumb and bad. But I want it to work. So uh, anyways, in the 1920s, Japan and America, like the rest of the world, were dipping their toes in animation. In this time period, we got the beginning of Disney and rubber tube animation, which you 100% know what I'm talking about. And Japan was having fun making some stories that were based on their folklore, like yokai and such. Uh, so America, on the other hand, was in a big ol' economic depression and making some super dark stuff from it. For example, Betty Boop was made in 1930. Betty Boop is a sex symbol. And also, we threw in some really blatant satanic imagery. That was there, too. And it was all cool and good for a teeny tiny while until a little event called World War II happened. And yeah, there was some pretty interesting um, propaganda that was made, and you know that infamous Donald Duck cartoon. But this is not important in the grand scheme of things, and here's why. Okay, so yeah, we need to talk about that. In Japan, cities were leveled and hundreds of thousands of people were suddenly erased from existence. In America, people flat out denied that it happened because it's so horrific that, I mean, people just deny it it sometimes kind of you can do that um and you're pretty smart but just in case you haven't picked up on this already um what happens in the real world directly uh, influence what happens in media so um that was really influential in the west we tried to pick up our act not only in animation but in all forms of media television was now super hyper friendly sitcoms and game shows were in and nightmare hellscapes were out kind of a bummer if you ask me it was like this until about the 90s when people got sick of uh, being fail family friendly and stuff, and we discovered this thing called satire. And now we're back in business. Welcome to modern art. In the East, on the other hand, well, that's not a fun story at all. You see, after the abrupt existential nightmare brought to life, the nation was a little scared and a little mad. For example, a non-animated source and probably one of the most overlooked metaphors in all of cinema, Godzilla. Contrary to what Godzilla is now, back then Godzilla was not just a big dinosaur with lasers. No, Godzilla was representative of something. And what you might ask? Well, a giant city ending um, entity born from radiation that knows no more than mass destruction? I got nothing. I'm gonna just quit my job and move to Arkansas. No ideas here. I'm done. This video's over. Okay, no, but in all seriousness, Godzilla was a pretty big deal. The culmination of years of suppressed sadness in one film, but in the end it tells a different story. The people of Japan got up and start to rebuild their society. Society. Which is a pretty big statement. And a great transition. Yeah! So, it was around this time that Japan really kicked animation into gear. With a kickstart in the economy, um, the industry had a lot of room to grow, and so it grew for a little bit. Um, one of the biggest hits um, was a series called Astro Boy, an episodic cartoon about a little robot friend that saves the day. Astro Boy began as a manga, a uh, sort of comic book, if you don't know, in uh, 1952, and was animated in the 1970s. So now that you're looking at him, you may be recognizing certain elements about his style and design that may be making certain connections in your brain about what I'm going to talk about next. We're talking about anime. What? You don't want me to talk about the ultimate bridge between Eastern and Western audiences, a topic that is becoming more and more present as the years go by, and one of the last bastions of 2D animation. You're crazy. So, anime is pretty much just a fancy word for Japanese animation, but even that definition is being skewed because people can't agree on whether anime is a style or just animation from a certain country. Which is funny, because when you really break it down, anime is just a shortened form of the word animation, so it really just means 
animation doesn't really have any 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 japan in that word um so either way it gets a special name for a variety of reasons the biggest one probably being its style followed by its general subject matter and then probably by a few certain tropes that i don't like and people in japan really liked it about as much as anyone would like it they saw it and said yeah that's pretty neat and then they went on their way and a few people in the u.s got their hands on it and said oh my god this is the best thing i've ever seen please give me more and a cultural bridge was born. Now keep in mind, in the 80s and 90s, the internet did not exist, or at least it wasn't super universal. So Western fans were very few and could only see what they could get their hands on. But then in the 90s, Pokemon happened, and now everyone kind of knows what animation on the side looks like. Uh, so now we come back to the internet, because it's the 90s now, and we got the internet and Flash animation. Heck yeah. I, I took a drink of water because um, I, I just was, it wasn't sounding good. Anyways, uh, <laughs> so you know how I've been segmenting this video into like, you know, uh, like countries? Well, I, I can't do that anymore because with the internet, you can talk to just about anyone in the world. So now we have this weird pseudo culture and everything's kind of meshing into each other. So there is this transitional period in the 2000s, but then with the advent of social media and online streaming services, Animation from abroad became progressively more available, and now if you open your little cellular device that you got in your pocket right there, you can watch whatever the heck from wherever the heck from what at whenever the I don't know. Animation is going nuts right now for two reasons. One, we have access for, uh, to inspiration from just about everywhere, and two, animation is getting cheaper to make. Do you want to know how much this video cost me? Hours of my life that I'll never get back. But other than that, it was pretty much free. So in animation, there's no style associated with any particular country anymore because animators can get inspiration from any country they want. Take, for example, the Netflix Castlevania series. Castlevania was a game that was developed in Japan and released worldwide in 1986. Its original sty style was very He-Man-esque with incredibly strong men in very short um, clothing and a very gritty color scheme. But as the years went on, the style became more similar to anime. In other words, cleaner, sharper angles, and that weird way they draw faces. Until in 2017, it's got its own anime. Here's the kicker though, that anime was developed in America. So this anime, Japanese animation, was developed by an American studio. So it's not Japanese animation, so it's not technically anime, but it looks like anime. So is it anime? That question is not important. What's really important is that it's becoming increasingly, increasingly more difficult to define a country by a particular style. Okay, so that's all I really had to say about the internet and um, the vast majority of modern animation. So, um... Okay, so that's the super brief history of animation, and by that I mean American and Japanese animation with hints of Indian and Chinese animation at the beginning there. And I mean, to be honest, South America and Africa and Antarctica don't really animate all that much. I think I missed one, but I'm not going to pay attention. Um, the only big hitter I missed is Europe, but I'm not counting them, so this is a very brief history of all animation, minus Europe, uh, Australia, um, but maybe I don't really care all that much. So ignore this part of the title and pay attention to everything that's not the subtitle. And I'm really bad at ending, um, presentations, so we're going to have a staring contest. This is just a picture, so I can do this, uh, for forever, and you can't win.